It is hot. I'm a Mormon and every six months we all get together to listen to our leaders talk. And in about an hour, 21,000 people are going to come out of this building. I'm going to make a time lapse of it. Let's find a good place to set up. Found a cool spot. It's up above and I've got the temple in the background. So it should, be, should look cool. This is what the time lapse is going to be of. Alright, to make this time lapse work in the middle of the day, I had to put on a filter called an ND filter and it stops how much light is coming into the camera. I have the aperture set to as high as it will go, 16. There's so much light, I gotta block it out. And the shutter speed is at one second. That way, there's a little bit of motion blur from the people in cars. I've set the intervalometer up to take a picture every five seconds. As you can see, there are a ton of people here leaving and I'm getting a shot. It's gonna look awesome. Well, the crowd's starting to thin out a little bit. It is hot. One thing I've learned about time lapses is they are uncomfortable. And you gotta be patient. In this time lapse, I wanted to show you a little more detail of what I'm doing with the pictures. So, I'm in Adobe Bridge. I've loaded them up using Camera Raw. And I'm just gonna go about halfway down and pick a picture. It doesn't really need to be any specific one. And then I'm going to come over here to these controls and tweak them. A lot of times I'll press auto just to see what it does. And if I like it, I'll keep it. In this case, I don't like it. So I'm going to undo that. I'm just going to play around with these a little bit. I'm going to bring the exposure up just a little bit. I'm also going to increase the contrast. I want to bring the shadows up as well. And then the highlights, I'm going to bring down a little bit. Then we can see those clouds. We can see the definition a little bit more. I'm going to increase the clarity a little bit. I like, I like the look it gives. And I'm going to increase vibrance and saturation a little bit. Really, it's best to just play around with the picture, the settings, until you find something you like. I like how that looks. Now, I need to apply it to the other ones. So, I go up here to the left-hand corner. I click this button. I'm going to select all, and then I'm going to sync settings. Here you can choose which settings you want to synchronize. In this case, I want to do all of them. So I press OK. And it should change them. You'll see it change them. You can see it go through and tweak them. So now all of the images will have the same settings and they'll look the same. Once all the settings have been synchronized for all the pictures, then we need to save it. So I'm going to select one and press Command A to select all and then I'm going to select Save Images. Here at the top, I can select where I want it to be saved. I typically just make a new folder within the existing folder called Processed and then I save it in there. I also save it as a JPEG. The files won't be as massive as the raw files. And I hit Save. This takes a little while. Down here in the bottom left hand corner you can see how many are left. I've got 336 to go. 